The process of differentiation starts with a function and produces a derivative. The reverse of this process is called anti-differentiation, and the result is called an antiderivative. We'll talk about these in this video. Formally, an antiderivative of a function f of x is a function whose derivative with respect to x is f of x. We often denote an antiderivative of a function using the corresponding capital letter. For example, capital f of x for an antiderivative of lowercase f of x. Let's look at an example. Let f of x equal 2x. Then capital F of x equals x squared is an antiderivative of f of x. Note that the definition doesn't say the antiderivative. Let's think about that. We could start with either x squared plus 5 or x squared minus 3, or actually lots of other functions too, and get the same derivative 2x. But what about the other direction? If we're only given the derivative, there's no way to know the original function. We have here f and f prime. And if we shift the graph of f vertically, the derivative doesn't change, since we're not changing the slopes of the tangent lines of f just by shifting it up or down. At best, we know the original function up to some constant. Let's look at an example of this. Suppose that a car's velocity in feet per second at time t in seconds is given by f of t equals t squared plus 1 on the interval 0 to 10. What can we say about the position of the car? We know that the velocity function is the derivative of the position function, so the position function is an antiderivative of the velocity function. This means that the position of the car at time t is capital F of t, which is t cubed over 3 plus t plus c for some c. We don't know what c is, though. Knowing only the velocity, we can't say anything about the position of the car that's not relative. Here are two possibilities. And if the cars both move at the same rates, then the derivatives can't be distinguished. But the positions aren't the same, since one car starts farther back than the other. But we can say something about the net change of the position. If we want, for example, to find the net change in position on the interval 2-7, we can find that by subtracting capital F of 2 from capital F of 7. When we do this, the c's cancel, so it doesn't matter what value c has. We'll always get the same difference. In the picture, that's this distance. Each car travels the same distance in the same period of time. If, however, we know something more about the car, then we might be able to determine the exact position function. Let's go back to the car example. Except now, let's suppose that at t equals 6, the car is 60 feet from a point designated as 0. Then the position of the car at time t is again capital F of t, which is t cubed over 3, plus t plus c, for some c. But we can now find c. Since f of 6 is 60, we can solve for c to find that it's negative 18. We now know the exact position function, namely t cubed over 3, plus t, minus 18.